Whistle. Uh, I'm 22. I uh, am uh, the future brewmaster of Whistle Brothers Brewing. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. I'm Peter Bissell, I'm 28. Um, I am, you know, I'm the second half to this. I'm a photographer by trade right now. Um, and I'm, I'm not the brewer, but I'm, I'm, every, I'm everything else. Not everything else, but. <laughs> we done this one. We are brewery and planning. I do want to clarify that because we do get inquiries all the time. Uh, you know, where can I buy your product? This and that, because we have, we, we, we did not waste any time with developing the branding and sort of the uh, the feel of our product right from the beginning. Um, oftentimes aided by my photography. So I do want to, you know, we are a brewery and planning. You know, you cannot go and find us anywhere yet. Um, but we are we are in the middle of the process, I would say, and things are going really well. So I just want to do kind of a disclaimer, you know, we are a brewery and planning. It all started, uh, I mean, he started home brewing. Wow, 19, 18? When was your first batch? 19. 19. I, I was actually, uh, I was going to school in Farmington, but I spent a summer down here living. Peter had an extra bedroom in his uh, current place. And I had sort of had good beer before, but it's kind of a rarity when you're an underage college uh, sophomore or whatever. <laughs> um, so I came down here and I couldn't go to the bars or anything, but you know, you'd occasionally um, get a bottle of something nice. Yeah. And uh, I, didn't have anything, I didn't have anything to do it with that. It wasn't pee, I just found them on the streets. Yeah, and, and drank them. But um, it was, uh, even though I couldn't go to the bars, there was um, just the sense of beer culture here was pretty palpable even to me. As an underage person, I just thought that um, uh, this melding of art and science, sort of equal parts, was really cool. And uh, so I just bought a kit online thinking I was immediately going to make like a Duval clone and nail it. <laughs> and um, that tasted like licking that nickel over there. And uh, so, and uh, but so, for whatever reason, stuck with it and kept, kept going. And, um, yeah, but no, it was Portland that really got me into it. I wasn't living here, but just the sense of culture and just kept with it. And from the beginning, his homebrew, even from the, now certainly, but even from the beginning, his homebrewing was never hobby-ish. It was very calculated and very um, measured. You know, okay, I did Except this batch. The first one. <laughs> I did this batch. Okay, what's wrong with it? What's good about it? What you know? It's a very. It was very scientific, and I watched him. And this is a 19, 20 year old kid. Um, it was very scientific in sort of observing, recording, and then elaborating on his findings. So, at this point now, I mean, it's an every other day thing. Um, super meticulous, but I always noticed that from the very beginning, you know, he was never doing it as like a hobby, like, hey, we'll have a bunch of beers to drink, this will be fun. It was, uh, even I think before he knew it, that he wanted to do this, um, on this scale, it was very calculated. It, it it, it, we didn't. We didn't not. We we didn't not give it a thought. We didn't just say, "Well, let's just use our name." That's that. Uh, but it felt right. Uh, it felt right. This is a family thing. Um, even though it, you know it has the, the the boat hasn't floated yet. It's it's a family thing, and um, I think that Bissell Brothers. It's it just it feels right, and it doesn't feel too far on the side of, okay, the, you know, and, and any name, you know, you see a, a, for example, you see a truck drive by, you know, some service or, you know, plumbing or something like that, so-and-so brothers and son. Um, it feels, it, it doesn't feel quite on that far to, to this side of the spectrum, and on the other side of the spectrum, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like it's something that we're not. It, like if we were to make up a name, whatever, you, you know, Shining Star Brewery. Um, I'm sorry if there's an actual Shining Star Brewery out there. That was just the first thing that came to my head. Um, it feels right, and uh, I've, I've talked to a few people about it, people that are play different roles in my life, so I, don't, I, I get mainly objective answers, and um, I, I, at this point we're gonna go with it. Um, we don't want to be too mouthy or wordy, so we're, we're 
going to use brewing company or, or something similar when legally necessary, but we'd like to be known as just B Bissell Brothers. Um, not the Bissell Brothers, we're not a band, but uh, <laughs> right. um, I do, as I said before, you know, going into this, Noah is the brewer, he's making the product. He is the one that knows things that I don't and will never really have the finesse and the sort of savoir-faire that he does. I mean, I've learned a lot about brewing since we've started this, but he is the brewer, but I'm thinking about different things. I'm thinking about uh, certainly branding. You know, that, that's kind of where my brain is wired because it's not just the beer. There's a million good beers out there. Um, we, it's more about how the product makes you feel. And I, I shouldn't say more about that, but it's that's, that plays a huge part in it. Branding, um, there's a lot of great beers that that I just don't buy because the, I think the branding sucks and the labeling sucks. And I know that I'm not alone in thinking that. You know, it's not just a, a selfish thought. Um, the product still has to come first and has to be, but like I was telling you before we started rolling, there's, there's no point in entering this market if we can't be number one or number two in our products category in the market region. Uh, there's just no point. So, um, that being said, you still need to, to define yourself through your branding and through uh, the marketing. How, you know, how does your product make, make people feel? What type of people does it excite? You know, the, those are things that are constantly going through my brain. And I think collectively we do a really good job. Um, he's thinking about the beer. I'm thinking about the customer. And together we're thinking about you know, distribution routes, um, production methods, uh, hours, you know, like sectioning out the work week and uh, how much can two people do, um, how can we make this float financially. Uh, so we, we complement each other big time because he does a lot of things that I can't and don't really have the brain for and, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking about things that he doesn't really have the time for because he's focused on making the product the best that it can possibly be. You know, if we were two home brewers, that might be, you know, we yeah, we might not think we we not we might not be thinking enough about the, the the product as a whole. We might just be like sort of geeking out over like what yeast strain to use or um, no these these this this uh, this hop is better than this hop or we, yeah. you know so uh, it, it it'll balance it out because I'm not thinking about any of that. I'm just tasting the beer and be like, oh my god, I can't believe you made this. I can't believe this is. This is getting cranked out of these igloo buckets in an apartment yeah. in, on the east end. Um, it's literally one of the best uh, beers of its type I've ever had. And uh, so he's thinking about all those things. And I'm thinking about, all right, how are we gonna, how are we gonna raise this monster up and let it, let it free, so to speak? Right. Okay. I'm Noah Bissell. I'm Peter Bissell. We're, We're the, the Bissell, Bissell Brothers. Brothers. And you're, you're watching, watching Active Beer Geek. Beer Geek.